Welcome back to another video with Aesthetic Detail Studio, the art of detailing. Once again, I'm Lewis Fair. If you guys are new here, the owner of this beautiful place where cars come to get made beautiful again. Welcome to Wet Sanding 101 or intro to wet sanding. So the reason why we're here today is we're gonna give you guys a bit of a follow-up video to one of our prior videos where we had an intro to water spots, how to prevent water spots, how to maintain your vehicle and remove basic water spots if you do have them. If you guys haven't seen that video, you can click the link right here and check out that video so that you can get a little bit more in-depth knowledge as to what water spots are, how they become prevalent on your vehicle, how to prevent them, and how to remove them from the surface. Today, we have this classic Grand National in the shop with some heavy duty type two water spotting all over every surface on this vehicle and unfortunately the only way that we're able to take care of this issue for this customer will be to wet sand every painted panel on the exterior of this vehicle so with that in mind we're going to dive right into what it takes to wet sand a vehicle like every major correction where you should start at is with a paint thickness gauge. Visual inspection can only tell you so much. A paint thickness gauge is a very vital tool to have inside your toolbox. When I did my measurements around the vehicle, I had a pretty good measurement reading around the vehicle. On average, I averaged anywhere from four and a half to 6.2 mils of thickness. Seeing as I am only chasing out water spots, I do not plan to do a multi-stage correction uh, sanding procedure on this vehicle. I only plan on chasing out the defects with only a single uh, grit of cutting. I am generally gonna cut out this entire thing with 3000 grit 3M Trizac pads. Here I am using my 15 millimeter Roops Bigfoot. Yes, this is the same polisher that you have seen in many other of my videos of me correcting paint, finishing paint down, removing scratches and defects. Although, I did put the six inch back and plate off my Roops 21 on this so that I can fit the six inch uh, 3000 grit sanding disc and that'll blow through uh, getting that sanded procedure and big flat panels done relatively quickly. And then on the smaller side of things, like I said earlier, I got the Flex PXE 80 E. It is currently in the dual action mode and I can change the mode by swapping out these adapters, quick release, pop them in, and we got the three inch, 3000 grit, sand and paper, 3M Trizac pad on the back of here. I have a little curved contour sanding block to try and give you an idea. So if I got a smaller ridge, I would wrap the smaller ridge Want to come right up to that edge and sand that whole ridge without having a block or a hard square. And then I have my KXK Dynamics uh, palm block and my ridge sticks. These are for very focused areas. So I'm gonna probably end up using these on areas like the uh, A pillar where it's a very small amount of paint. It's about that wide. But for the most part, these are the tools that I'm gonna to use to dive into this wet sanding job and wet sand out all of the water spots that I'm looking to remove in this job. I did lay a tape strip across these high spots um, while I was using the machine to wet sand out these areas just because the thinnest paint on the paint, a painted surface will be those edges and contoured areas. And you never wanna run a uh, sandpaper especially a machine sander across an edge because more than likely you will blow through that paint on that edge relatively quickly without even trying or without any effort at all. It's just that thin. So let's dive into a little bit of wet sanding here. Let's just start from scratch. I got some Kamoi tape out of Japan. And so all of these high points, I'm gonna just lay some tape across every high point so where there's a ridge, 
or a transition, I'm just laying tape to protect those edges. My edges are safe now. In this bottle, I have distilled water and a couple pumps of Johnson Johnson's regular baby soap. Technically, I am not wet sanding, I am damp sanding. Damp sanding, I do a light mist onto the panel. So I just put one spray to wet the pad and no pressure at all. I just sat it down on the surface. I'm not applying pressure. I'm, my hand is under the machine to support it. And now I'm just guiding the machine across the surface. I like to do quick passes, move fast, keep the machine moving. You don't wanna build up heat. You know you're creating a defect. You're not gonna lift the sand and paper off the surface and see perfect paint. You're trying to create an even defect while removing the defects that you are attacking with the sandpaper. Right here, I can see one of the water spots remaining, the outline of it. Right here, I can see the outline of one of the water spots that remain. Now that I've achieved majority of the area being sanded down, I'm gonna switch over. I have another three inch. I'm using one of my KXK Dynamics Ridge Sticks. Wrap it around the block and I pinch it in my hand. I give it a couple mist. I get a panel of mist. No pressure. All I'm doing is just lightly tracing back over what I sanded to bring it back to an even, even sanding mark in this whole area. And I try and evenly make an even amount of passes over the entire area. This is exactly what I was going for. Once I get this vehicle sanded out, we still have to do some correction. We're just gonna dive in a little bit more work and try and knock out the wet sanding job on the rest of this car. And then we're gonna dive into correcting this paint out. And I'll see you guys a little bit later. All right, so here we are, back again in the studio. So far, we have fully sanded out this entire vehicle using 3000 grit. Sadly, you guys aren't gonna get a chance to see the whole car sanded down. So you guys get to see kind of almost through the secondary step where this panel and the roof are the last panels with, that have the sanded marks left in them. As you can see, this door here has already began to be cut. So we have the sanding marks for the most part leveled out of this door. We just got some edge work to work on before we finish down and bring that high gloss sign and remove those rotary hologram marks and microfiber haze mark from the surface of this vehicle. I've been using a rotary with a roots coarse wool pad, um, five inch pad, five inch back and plate, around 1400 to 1500 RPMs and I've been using a CarPro Ultra Cut to cut these sanding marks out. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this panel a little bit so you guys can see me do some rotary work in this video and see what it takes to cut the sanding marks out initially. You're still gonna need another finishing step to level down and remove those holograms or haze marks that the prior cutting step to remove this sanding defect off of the surface required. So, as always, when working with a rotary, we're gonna pick up the bead on the fly, about 1400 RPM-ish. All right, cool, so, as you can see, we've cut, and before I even wipe the panel, you can already see gloss, depth, reflection, flatness, clarity, showing through the leftover remaining polished compound oils. Use my Clint Korea here to level down those remaining oils. And the only thing left is the holograms from using such an aggressive cutting step. So, after I finish cutting all of these sanding marks down 
off this side panel, upper panel, get these edges cleaned up and work this whole panel down. Do the same thing to the roof and then we'll begin to finish it down. Let's do some more cutting and see how far we can bring this out while I got you guys in the shop with me right now. I use a DA polisher, a foam pad, and a finishing polish to finish and remove all of this stuff out, but I have an even defect that doesn't require me to stop. Oh, there's a deeper scratch left here. Now I gotta change up the process, cut that scratch out, go back, and then continue to finish this process down. Seeing as how I wet sanded this entire vehicle, the wet sanding process took care of all of the defects that I was looking to remove. I removed those during the sanding process. And now that I created that initial even defect to work through all of my main defects, I used the microfiber and the wool in conjunction with each other, depending on where on the car I was working. I used those two different pads to cut the sanding marks out and level that aggressive sanding mark off the surface. On the professional detailing side of things, we're chasing a little bit more perfection or a little bit higher level of work than what a production grade or a dealership level detail or factory level paint job is gonna provide. That's why people bring their vehicles to us because of the service and the level of work and attention to detail that we're able to provide as professional detailers. So now that I've cleared up on that a little bit, um, the only thing left for us to do is to dive in and eventually start finishing this vehicle down. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. Like, share, subscribe to this video, and don't forget to click the little bell notification if you do decide to subscribe to ADS here. Thank you once again. Yeah.